Hi. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. How are we doing? Good evening, everybody. How has the week been? How have you been doing? And how are you doing with your steps and goals? I hope you've been following them, especially after last week's teaching where I explained why. And that's the why I will be continuing today. Understanding why we are to do those things. So, <clears throat> sorry, I'm just waiting a few two minutes for people to join us we are letting them know that we are live thank you very much so Okay. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm not I'm not seeing the screen right now, so that's what I'm trying to sort out. So sorry about that. Okay. Just a couple more minutes. We just want to let people know we are live, we are online and then we'll start. And today I will be speeding because i want us to cover this understanding why today so we have to get through family relationships health and finance and last week i was only able to do god oh well that is god <laughs> he's only <on his> plants <laughs> and important <laughs> so okay just a minute more thank you <clears throat> okay, now I'm seeing my people. Justina, good evening. Bukolua, gift. Uju, Damilola, Rebecca, good evening. Thank you so much for joining. And once it's 9.06, I'm going to get started. Thank you so much for joining. Okay. Father, we bless you, Lord. We thank you. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. We give you the adoration. Thank you for another time in your presence. Thank you for your people. Thank you for that which you have called us to do and be. Thank you for the grace that has been released unto us. Father, as we go into your word, explaining to your people why these instructions were given. Help them to understand it's for their lifting, it's for their rising, and it's that they will be in the right position to receive that which you have for them this year and i pray lord that none of them will miss out on everything you have for them this year in jesus name thank you father for in jesus mighty name we have prayed and received amen so yes <clears throat> last week i explained to you why we are to do so that you have an understanding i hope many of you understood that message and i hope if at any time you are you find yourself falling behind this one is a message from the holy spirit he said if at any time you find yourself falling or struggling to to go to do those things he says simply go back to listen to the messages understanding why 
and there will be a renewed determination in you. In fact, I did not even think of that at all till today when he told me. He said one of the reasons why he told me to do this series on this and uh, this message, understanding why, is so that when weakness comes, when we are deviating, we can go back to that message and again understand why God is telling us to do these things. So Today, I'll be starting from the things I told you to do regarding your family and relationships, which is number one, pray, <coughs> sorry, and do devotion together as a family every day. What is the reason for this? Because there is something about the prayer of unity of a family. I'm going to tell you something the Lord told my husband and I years ago. He said, you know, you know that saying when people say uh, if a family that prays together stays together, you know, and they say a threefold uh, fold cord is not easily broken. This is the reason why. It is very, very, in fact, practically impossible for Satan to step into a family that is truly united. And prayer is one of the most unifying factors. Even if, even if uh, people have issues together, you have issues, you have where you are fighting and everything, if you come together and pray together every day, believe me, before you know it, that those issues will start fading. It's the reason this happens is because it's a spiritual principle of God. The Bible says, whenever two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in their midst. It's impossible for anything contrary to the will of God to thrive when the presence of God is there. There's a dimension of God we carry with us as individuals. But there is also another dimension that we of God we carry, a greater dimension we carry when we come together in unity. That's the one the Bible says, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in their midst. It's far more than I will never leave you nor forsake you, or the Holy Spirit is not. There's a dimension of God that can never be realized in an individual. It can only be realized in a gathering. And the greatest gathering is the family unit. Because everything god will ever do in life in the world in any area starts from the family unit so there's a way he displays himself when the family gathers together the holy spirit told my husband and i he said the secret of your success will forever be your unity in fact many times when we have something huge and big to do and I go before God and I say, Father, there's this thing I want to do and it's so huge. I don't even know how it can be done. I need your help. Do you know what he will tell me? He'll say, you and your husband come together in unity. He said, the moment two of you can be in unity before me regarding this thing, said, it will be done. Nothing will stop it. And again and again, we've done that. In fact, at one point in time, we started discovering something. Whenever we have a big project coming ahead of us, and we're already expectant, we are seeing it that is about to materialize, more fights will just come up. And the moment we fight, the whole thing will scatter again. And we kept on seeing the pattern, seeing the pattern. Till one day, my husband called me. He said, see, Anytime we're about to do something good, something great and everything, don't you notice one issue will just come up and we fight and the whole thing will scatter. So we need to be, we need to be smart about this thing. We need to be sensitive in the spirit and not allow the enemy to be truncating this thing. And since that time, we determine, even if he offends me, I refuse to take offense. Once there's something where we are doing, if, even if I offend him, he will refuse to take offense. Once there's something we are looking forward to, because we saw that truly Satan knows <clears throat> that our unity is the secret of our success. So he tries to fight that unity and we say no. 
And then the Holy Spirit told us, one of the greatest ways you can ensure that unity is protected is by praying together as a family. When you pray together as a family, my presence is called into that home. Let me see any devil that can step into that home when the presence of God is there. So now do you understand why it is very important to do devotion together as a family every day? In, in my house, as I told you when I was uh, teaching you these things, in the mornings we do devotion where we read our family devotion. You are, many of you see that I post the book we use is Faith Food by uh, Kenneth Higgins. And it's very short. We don't read the Bible, the verse is already there. There's a verse of the day, there's a short sermon for the day, and there's a confession, as in just perfect for our family. And that's what we do. 15 minutes in the morning, we are done. And then at night, <clears throat> just before we started this live, we did the night prayer together. The only thing we just do is we pray, we pray together, we sing, and we do our confession and then my son goes to sleep even if me and his dad are still awake and then my husband and i we also have our own private prayer time together that we do together then each one of us also we have our individual prayer uh, time and we do this every day but that family devotion extremely important that's what brings in the presence of god so please do that then number two, I said choose a monthly verse as your family verse. Teach it to your children and declare it every morning before leaving home and every night before sleeping. What this does, when you make declarations, the Bible says, whatsoever you say, that will I, in my hearing, that will I do unto you. What this is helping you to do is helping you to ensure that both you and your children you know the right words to declare and you say the right words and then so that you will have what you say that's why i told you change it every month change it every month look for a verse that you your spirit resonates with or that has to do with something you want god to do in your life at this moment and then be declaring it said the bible says out of the mouth of two witness uh, two witnesses a, a word is confirmed now imagine you, your husband, your children, you are declaring this. You are confirming that word. <coughs> you are ensuring it becomes your reality. This is one of the easiest ways to see the manifestation of the word of God in your life. And this will also ensure that your children know not to say the negative things. And even you, self, you will not be saying the negative things. So that's the power of this, is the fact that as you are declaring this, you are already more than two witnesses. Said, and a word is confirmed. That word has to be confirmed once there are more than one of you speaking the same thing. It also helps to align all of you in the same direction. You know, more unity. Unity actually means agreement of goal. You understand? both of you and all, all of you agree on something so what having a word for the month makes sure that all of you are in agreement concerning a particular word and where there is agreement i've told you unity oh it's powerful it's one of the secrets that's why you see satan tries to foster divisiveness he tries to foster a uh, uh, disunity because he, he understands the spiritual power of unity. It's not just physical. It's a strong spiritual power. What makes the Godhead the Godhead is actually unity. I hope you know that. Oneness of purpose. That's what makes them the Godhead. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. What makes them one is unity. And see so the prayer Jesus prayed. He said, make them one even as we are one 
it's powerful unity is powerful i can do a whole two hours teaching on this explaining and breaking it down why well, do not have the time now but i beg you guard the unity in your family with all fierceness don't let anything come between you and the way to do it as i've said family devotion and then so that both of all of you have the same focus have a monthly verse then i said 15 minutes of your prayer should be totally declaring the word of god on your spouse your children yourself your home the works of your hands you remember those 15 15 minutes prayers i told you to be doing what this one part of the 15 minutes is to speak the word of god so for example you are blessing your husband you know i've told you before i said my husband never steps out of this house without me declaring on his life I never step out of this house without him declaring on me. My son never steps out without us declaring on him. It is speaking the word of God into reality, into manifestation in their lives. Many of you, you say you have been praying. Let me tell you something. Prayer is talking to God. Declaring is speaking to the situation. And look at what the Bible says. It says, you will say unto the, whosoever says to this mountain and does not doubt, be thou removed and lifted into the sea. It didn't say whosoever says to God about the mountain. Let me tell you what talking to God does. You receive the power and the backing of God when you are praying. Now that power and the backing is in you. What are you doing with it? Many of us will just stop at prayer. But the truth of the matter is, when we pray, we receive power. We are now like just carrying the power like this. What are we doing with it? What are we doing with it? You've not used that power to speak what you want to see into reality. That is what declaring is. Declaring is not father bless my husband. No, that is still speaking to God and God has already blessed him. Declaring is speaking into his reality. Oh, my husband is the head and not the tail. Everywhere he steps, he receives the favor of God. The hand of God is mighty upon him. The Lord preserves his going and his coming in the mighty name of Jesus. My children are taught of the Lord. The Lord himself is their mentor. They have understanding beyond their years. Everywhere they step, they receive favor. Evil. The hand of God is upon them. They are shielded in the school. Because of their presence in the school, that school is shielded from harm. They are exempted and separated from things that happen in the world because they are a royal priesthood, the holy nation, the peculiar people called and set, uh, separated from the world. The light of God is upon them. The spirit of excellence is found in them. They, they understand the word of God. They hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. They know the voice of the shepherd. A stranger's voice they will not heed. That is declaring. And there is no greater declaration than declaring the same thing with the Holy Spirit. And what is the same thing the Holy Spirit has said? The word of God speak it as a command into their lives it is not prayer it is declaring so 15 minutes out of that your your three three hours prayer make sure you are declaring you are speaking the reality of god into their lives their body is the temple of the almighty no weapon fashioned against them shall prosper oh they have authority they trample on snakes and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy and nothing shall in any wise harm them there is no divination against them no enchantment against them because their heritage is of god the word of god says i have been old and i have been young and now i'm old i've never seen the righteous forsaken nor their children beg bread my children will never beg bread no matter how difficult things are the lord provides for them out of his abundance we have and we spread forth when there is a casting down we declare there is a lifting up and i declare upon my husband there is a lifting up everything he touches prospers in one year he reaps a hundredfold of that which he sows that is speaking you have received the power from god you are now speaking that word with power so declare declare don't just pray the bible says you will say to the mountain so speak to the situation you have the authority look at when god was speaking to job he said have you commanded your day ah that 
that word is powerful to me. He said, have you commanded your day? Meaning we can command our day the way it should go. Today is 1st of February. Happy New Month, by the way. This month, this morning when we woke up, when my husband and I were praying, I spoke into the month. I said, this is the month the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I said, every day in this month will be greater than the last in the name of Jesus. I declare unto this month, you cannot walk against me because my father is your creator and he is the one that created you. It is impossible for the created to walk against the child of the creator. I said this month you will not walk against us. We declare abundance upon you. This month is a month of abundance unto us. You know what I am doing? I am commanding my month. Thy precious jewels. Before every month, we have what we call possessing the month. What that means is before the month arise, arise, comes in, we possess it. How do we possess it? By our declarations. We pray to God, we receive the power, and then we go forth in that power and declare. So, speak, speak, speak. Then, I said, speak to God about everything first before anyone else. Do you know why? This will help you not to say a negative thing into your life. That's what this one does. It helps you not to say negative things into your life. Like something happens. Ah, before you carry phone and say, Mommy, my friend, everything has just scattered. You see that? First of all, go before God. Ah, Father, this thing happened. I do not know what to do. Lord, I do not know what to do. Help me. This, 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 this. There is no way you will go into the presence of God with an issue and come back with the same mindset. It's not possible. It's not possible. So that helps you from saying negative things. So instead of saying what has gone wrong, first of all, take it to God. Take it to God. Speak it to God. And then by the time you come out of His presence, you are in the right frame of mind to speak the right thing, to address the situation. And many times we we'll even find out we don't need to talk to people about it again. Instead of looking jaka, 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 for where there is no help. Who, which of, who is the greatest help you can have? And this is actually honoring God. When it, it will give you a mindset of God first in everything. It will give you a mindset of the fact that there is no problem greater than God. Because if your first mindset is Ah, let me tell God about it. Believe me, you've sorted the issues of your life. You have sorted the issues of your life. So that's what this one does. That's what this one does. It, it, it helps you put God first. It helps you not to see any problem as a problem. It helps you not to speak the negative things. And it helps you not to speak anyhow to anybody who will even complicate the issue for you sure you get god will never complicate it for you so then determine before any complaints two praises and commendations must proceed to your husband and your children or to anybody around you you know i told you this before you make one single complaint first of all praise the person for two things for at least two things do you know what this does it helps us build people up instead of breaking them down telling your child you never do anything right is wrong is wrong but when you are you're already giving the child a beaten mindset but when before you say any complaint maybe he didn't he didn't do his own work or something before you do any complaint you first, you first look at him and say, Ah, thank you so much for helping me remove that cloth from there. I'm so grateful. You, It was so considerate of you to notice it and see it. I appreciate you. And this morning, I noticed the way you helped your sister to open the door. Come, let me give you uh, a hug. Number one, it will even help you too to cool your temper and prevent you from saying a bad thing to them. And please... I want you to know, as a parent, your words are very powerful over your children. They are very powerful. 
you can speak negativity into their life that will haunt them for the rest of their life except the mercy of god steps in so when you do things like this it helps you not to say the wrong thing to your children it helps you to build their confidence and it helps you it to foster a closer relationship with your children with your husband everybody loves appreciation and you are that means you are also setting a good example to, to them they are also learning from you to compliment people to praise people i mean i i can tell you that in this world we need kindness more than anything and this is what this will help you to be to be a kind person to practice kindness in front of your children and to raise kind children look at the way people talk online do you know all that will be eradicated if they learn to speak praises first before complaining and do you know the funny thing is it will even temper the complaints it will make you not to be horrible to people because how can you praise a person and the next thing that follows it is you are just stupid you can't it's impossible for you to be able to say that you will not be able to say that the moment praise or commendation has gone first it immediately tempers that <clears throat> the, the 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 complaints you want to give and here's the thing we become like god god doesn't tell us what we he, he doesn't condemn us he doesn't tell us again and again what we are doing wrong instead he shows us what we can be and then we grow into that that's exactly what praising people before complaining does it tells them they, this is what they can be they look forward to it they want to do better so if you've been complaining and complaining and complaining about your son your children or your husband why don't you try this method and you see the change it will bring there will be peace in your home there will be joy there will be growth so <clears throat> moving on i said reach out to at least one person per day to greet them pray for them or encourage or just tell them you are thinking of them i still did this today a lot of people are going through things this is one of the ways we spread the love of god around the world I believe if there will be a whole lot less suicides if someone can know that there's someone thinking about me even when they don't tell you they are going through any issues just reaching out and saying how are you doing I've just been thinking about you you've been on my mind how are you doing it's it's so powerful it's so powerful. a lot of people feel alone unloved this is the way we show the love of god to the world it's not only to believers to everybody around us people are going through such a lot be the hand and voice of god to them be the hand and voice of god to them please and it's not just say reaching out sometimes you can help with money if you know someone is going through a difficult time you can send food store for you just find something to do you can just help someone or you can just go and keep someone company just reach out to people reach out to people and that's what this one will do to help people not to be alone to help them not to be depressed to help them to have a more reason to go on some of us that have lost loved ones there are many people who carry regrets oh i should have called more i should have reached out more do that now do that now then i say also be a blessing to one person per day financially or in visit or in health that one is also linked to the other one so i will not go that then we are moving on to health i said determine no unhealthy juice or minerals again have you seen the kind of sicknesses going on in the world right now against children satan is actively targeting health actively i told you this last year when the holy spirit revealed to me that one of the greatest attacks of satan in these times will be against health and we saw that see how many people will just hear they just collapsed young people they just collapsed what happened they don't know they just collapsed 
one of the ways to combat this please stop drinking those poisons in your body please stop drinking those poisons in your body you cannot be declaring health and be poisoning yourself at the same time the it's in the world the, the it, we even have this proverb in the world in the world action speaks louder than words you cannot be saying i will not die and then be doing things that will kill you which one do you think satan will hold on to those are one of the ways we negate the promises of god in our lives by doing the wrong thing contrary to what we are confessing i i cannot remember the last time i took minerals it's been years it's been years the change in my health is amazing it's amazing please for your oh god please do not let the enemy be able to access you through health this year i beg you if you know the amazing things god has for his children this year you will fight to turn nail to to make sure you don't miss it do not let it and do you know the funny thing about health no matter how much god is blessing you if your health is not okay all that blessing will not mean a thing no matter how he blesses you financially just one sickness can erode all that financial blessing and put you in, in debt and put you in debt please 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 when my dad dad died that uh, was ill last year i know how much we spent i told you savings that had been saving from beginning of the year everything just went on that sickness everything went on that sickness and the truth is my dad never ate healthy he didn't even when you tell him he will say hey, he's already old enough don't let that be you don't let that be you please so moving on drink a glass of water every three hours between 9 a.m and 9 p.m a lot of us don't drink enough water a lot of us we do not drink enough water change this water is crucial to the organs and here's the thing it helps you it helps you clean your kidney your liver it cleanses is water is the greatest detoxifying liquid before you spend money for plenty detoxifying and everything first ensure you are drinking water it helps against headache it purifies in fact when you have cut when you have cold your immune system they'll say stay hydrated so this is one of the ways you ensure your health not only for yourself for your children teach them to drink water every three three hours just a glass it doesn't need to be a big glass because you can also drink too much water which is, which is not good but just a, a regular glass of water i told you i said one of the easiest ways to do this is when you're about to do your 15 minutes prayer just drink a glass of water so let the two be going together anytime i'm about to pray glass of water you understand this will help your health it, it will help detoxify your organs help your help to be flushing your body and everything so please drink water and it will help you to stop craving uh, uh, unhealthy things and it will help you to stop overeating yes many times when we feel hungry it's actually because we are dehydrated in fact arella told me one time she said anytime you you feel hungry first drink water and see if you still feel hungry and you know when i tried this i found out that 50 percent of the times i eat it wasn't really about food it was the water that was the most important so please drink water it's good for your health determine at least one fruit and one vegetable per day the veg fruits and vegetables are the greatest immune boosters be when you when people come to me and come and say eh, how do i boost my immunity i just tell them fruit and vegetables they are the greatest immune boosters created by god the reason you fall sick often is because you do not have enough fruits and vegetables in your diet i put here i said one fruit and one vegetable per day at least but the truth of the matter is the the recommended this thing is five servings per day uh, three of vegetables two of fruits per day it can just be one big carrot per day one garden egg and uh, one avocado 
that has already covered vegetables fruit one orange one apple that has already covered uh, the five portions you see that please do that those are the greatest immune boosters for the body they they build your immunity so that you don't just fall sick up and down here and there especially for children and then determine to walk 15 minutes per day exercise your body needs exercise it's it's important these are things what this does is actually to help you make use of food you eat help to keep you active help to keep your blood flowing do you know it was discovered that uh just one hour walking in a week so if you divide it 15 15 15 minutes per day it's already more than one hour in a week one 15 and uh, one hour of walking in a week is enough to increase your life expectancy by 20 years imagine that it prevents heart issues it prevents blood pressure issue it helps control sugar it as in it's so effective so effective if you cannot walk maybe it's raining or you are doing something dance in your house just put on praise and worship it will serve two purposes it will bring the presence of god and also work on your health 15 minutes dancing mm, 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 mm. it doesn't matter whether you're a good dancer or a, the purpose is to move your body not to win a dancing competition please do that it's one of the things a lot of us are so deficient in we do not exercise our body we think because we are running up and down that's exercise no stress is not exercise it's not in fact exercise will relieve stress i've told you of that time when i was finding it difficult to sleep and i was just tossing and turning and, and i said holy spirit please help me to sleep and he said get up and exercise i was like mm just make me sleep i'll exercise tomorrow he didn't want to me again and then i got up i exercised just 15 minutes i took a shower i laid down and knocked out many of us don't sleep well because we do not exercise if you have difficulty sleeping try exercising before then exercise take your bath and lie down and watch what will happen i i was i was listening to pastor kion and he said something <clears throat> He said many believers do not need miracles they just need to obey god and i said this is powerful many of the things we are praying for have have the results are found in the things we do not do you pray about your health you are not eating right you are not exercising you don't need a miracle you need you need to start eating right and to start exercising he said you do not need you do not need a financial miracle you need to save and it's true you don't need a financial miracle you need to learn saving he said many of us this that's pastor Keanu. he said many of us the things we spend money on by the time we calculate it in a month we'll see all the useless rugby rugby rather rather that we say rather than buying minerals that money for minerals be dropping it in your colo every time you feel like buying minerals take the amount you would have spent and drop it in your colo at the end of the month break it and see how much you have saved so that is that i said then every time as you walk make confessions based on this word of god about your health again this is speaking to your body i speak to my body a lot i say my body you belong to the lord you have to work for him so you have to be in optimum condition optimal condition you you must not fall sick because you have work to do i said my body as you are eating this food it will do good in your body it will know this food will not work against you it will make you strong and healthy when i'm if at any point in time i'm ill and i have to take drugs or something I, I look at the drugs and I say, these drugs, you are entering a body that is sanctified by Christ. I say, so you are compelled to walk right. I say, no matter the side effects that is associated with you, I said, the moment you enter this body, all those side effects are nullified. I said, you know why? Because this body is the temple of the Almighty. 
you are not allowed to destabilize the place where the Spirit of God dwells. I speak to my body. I do. So make confessions regarding your body. The same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in me and is quickening my mortal body unto life. My heart, my blood, my organs, my skin, every single one of them answers to the name of the Lord. The Holy Spirit owns you. I do not belong to myself. This life I live, I live by the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I said, this body, you have been healed. I said, you are going to walk the, till the time comes for me to exchange you for the imperishable body. I said, but for as long as you are on this earth, you will be in optimal condition. You are not, not allowed to fall. You are not allowed to weaken. I said, as Caleb said when he was 80, he said, as my strength was when I was 40, so it is right now. I said, this body, that is what you will be. Speak to your body. Make confessions based on the word of God. Finance. Yes, I think I'm making good time. I said pay 10% to God before you touch the money. Don't think of it as tight. Think of it as honoring God over your finances and putting him first. Can I tell you something? Whenever you put God first over a situation, you challenge his responsibility and his fatherhood over that thing. You challenge his fatherhood over that thing. He is compelled. I mean, how can God be above something and that thing will be going wrong? It's impossible. It is extremely impossible. That's what you do when you do this. And I told you the way I do it. It's not as if when I've spent and spent, I'll now say, ah, the 10%, let me pay it now. No. Believe me, if I'm owing someone, I don't owe. But if I'm owing someone, using it as an example, and the person is right in front of me, and payment comes in, I'll tell the person, just give me five minutes, please. I will first remove that 10% before any other thing goes out of it. This is not something new I just started. I have been doing this for years. And when I'm paying it before God, I don't tell, I don't pay this thing. I say, Father, I honor you with this. This is just... 10% of all that you have given me. If you didn't give me, will I have it? I honor you in my life, Father. You are forced. This money does not belong to me. Even the 90% that is left does not belong to me. It belongs to you. And this is what I'm using as a connection to your Lordship over my finances. Thank you, Father. I love you. I appreciate you. Thank you. This is my honor to you. I don't just drop it. No, I speak to God regarding it. I honor you with it. And if I'm honoring him, I should show. What this does is it brings your finances under God. It makes him the Lord of your finances. As I tell people, it's only where you what you open up before God that he will be God over. Many of you, You've made him God, God over your health, but not over your finances. Now you still they determine how you spend the money. No. Bring everything under God. There's no aspect of my life that is not under God. There's no aspect of my life that is not under God. My finances included. That's number one. So it's a way of honoring God and bringing him. I don't think of it as tight. When, when, when people will be arguing whether you should pay tight or you should not pay tight. That one no concern me if you like pay tight. If you do not, if you like, do not pay tight. What me I know is that I have chosen 10%. The very first money that ever, that always leaves anything I have belongs to God. He's the first, the alpha and the omega. <clears throat> Before I give any other person, I give to him. As a sign of the honor and the position I place him over my life. So that he will know that money is no more important than him. Money is subject to him. Mammon can never be over my life. Mammon can never compete with God over my life. 
everything I have belongs to him. Then I said, save 20% of every money. Let me tell you what this does. It helps you to have savings for opportunities that God will be bringing before you. See, this year and the next, and uh, well, three years, this year, next year, upper year, God is going to be bringing amazing opportunities. Let me tell you what he said he will be doing. He said he will be taking the wealth of the Gentiles and giving it to believers. Many of you think he will just kind No! The fact is that he will bring opportunities your way. When you will have the opportunity to invest in a certain company, that savings is what will come in. When you will have the opportunity to buy up certain properties that will be used to enlarge you. That will be used to enlarge you. It is that savings that will come in handy. Imagine when God brings in those opportunities and you do not have those savings. I remember Pastor Poju saying 90% of the properties he owns, he bought cheaply when God brought the opportunities for him because he had savings. He said someone would just call him and tell him there's a plot of land, a, a, a very, very heavy plot of land that the bank wants to sell, sell at a negligible amount. Some of you, imagine having opportunity to buy a plot of land in... What's that new place they are building now in Lagos? Babe, what's that new place they are building in Lagos on the island? The new area they are opening up in Ibeju. No, not Ibeju. What's the name of that? Anyway, Sha, just imagine the opportunity the, to buy something there for 500,000. How many of you have that 500,000 right now? And imagine, and the, 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 the value of that place might be 10 million. The value of the place might be 10 million. And then an opportunity comes for you to buy it at 500,000. That is God bringing that opportunity your way. That he might take the possession of the Gentiles and hand it over to you. But <clears throat> auntie no get savings. She no get 500. You see how many of you will lose opportunities. And believe me, God is going to do a lot of that this year, next year, upper year. A lot of that. Tremendous opportunities. Opportunity to buy a factory for a negligible amount. Opportunity to invest and become a major shareholder in a huge company. That is why God is saying, start saving. I'm going to bring these things your way. But you need to be prepared. It's, it is not luck. There is nothing like luck. Luck is simply opportunity meeting preparation. The preparation is your responsibility. The opportunity is God's responsibility. That's why he's saying save this 20%. Don't because of what you will eat today jeopardize the future that God wants to give you. God will not do a miracle and rain money. What he would do, let me tell you what he would do. He will ensure that even as you are saving that 20%, he will ensure you do not lack the things you should have. Some of you might need to be more disciplined. As I told you before, some of you might need to be more disciplined. But you see that 20% you will be saving. God will ensure it doesn't cause too much issues for you. But yes, you should learn to discomfort yourself for the future. So the fact that some of you might need to reduce the amount of meat you buy. Before, I will say, ah, I need to buy meat of 80,000. No, I, that's what I need and everything. But you see, this thing, this 20%, God told me about it since early last year. I've started saving it since early last year. Since early last year. When I started saving 20%, I stopped buying 80,000 meat. I now started working with what I had left. So imagine if I'm paid 100,000 for something, 10% immediately goes to God. Immediately. His remaining 90%. 
Now, 20% is 20,000. I don't take 20% of the 90. I still calculate it as 20% of the 100. But that's me. You can calculate 20% of the 90. I still take it as 20% of the 100. So 20% of the 100, that's 20,000. Plus the 10,000 that has already gone. That's, that's already 30,000. So it's remaining 70,000. Then I take 10%. That's another 10,000. And I put it in an account where I have access to at any time for emergencies. So you see, that is 40% leaving that money. 40,000. It's remaining 60,000. Out of 60,000, am I able to buy 80,000 meat again? What I now did, I was I adjusted to buy meat I, I, that is within that budget. And when I buy that meat, I cut it in portions. And I tell my people, we are doing this so that a time will come when we will not need to do this. When we would have taken, when our preparation will meet with the opportunity God is bringing our way, and then He will put us in a big place. Have you read that part in the Bible where He says He will take the wealth of the Gentiles and give it to those who worship before the Lord? Listen to what He said they will use it to do. He said they will be used for good food and fine clothing for the servants of God. Imagine. So why would I use meat to deprive myself of that in the future? It means even that meat, by the time that opportunity comes, I will eat it in excess. Deprive yourself today for tomorrow. So you see the importance of saving that 20000 Save it. Then budget according to what is remaining. Cut your coat according to the material you have. You will not die. God will ensure you will not die. It will help you budget. It will help you plan. It will help you not to be wasteful. It will help you to maximize everything you have. You see, I was telling, that Sunday I was telling you, I said I made acha for my son as breakfast. And the acha was remaining in the pot. When we came back from church, I wanted to make a bath for him. Will I put the acha away? No. I put water with the acha and use the acha and the water to make the bath and everything. It, no wastage. Many of us are wasteful. You, if we eat food and soup is remaining, even if the soup is concolo like this for only one person, I have small bowls. I will put it inside and put it down. The day we are looking for what can we eat, I'll say me and my husband, we can sort out ourselves. We can drink gari. Maybe I don't feel like cooking. I said, but okay, this, this small soup is enough for Andrew. He can eat something with it. You know what is happening? I'm budgeting based on what is available. And it's stopping me from being wasteful. Remember when Jesus told them, he said, gather out the remnants of the fish and bread. Let nothing be wasted. The Holy Spirit taught me something before. He said, the moment you start being wasteful, you are telling God you have more than enough. You are telling God you have more than enough. So you block yourself from, from increase until you start making use of what you have that to ensure there is no wastage the reason many of us lack is because we are wasteful the reason many of us are stagnant is because we are wasteful budgeting helps you to avoid wastage by the time you are saving and you are having to do with the little you have you will stop wasting then i said learn something new about your work or business or social media every week have a something learned journal Note down every new thing you learn and implement the new thing you learn. Let me tell you what this will do. It's that verse in the Bible that says, Seest thou a man diligent in his work, he will stand before kings and not before mere men. God wants to lift you before kings, but that is based on the knowledge you know that will stand you out from others. Apostle will say, he said, eh, Arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Gentiles come to your light. He said, but their kings don't come to your light. They come to, your, to the brightness of your rising. Meaning, something must stand you out for kings to notice you. Before presidency can call you to come and bake cake for them, you say if you go don't reach one kind level of cake baking, that's what that verse means. 
Kings don't look for mediocres. They look for people that are excellent in their field. So if you want God to lift you before kings, something new every week, upgrade your knowledge every day, improve, grow, push. That's what this will do to you to ensure that you are someone that God can lift. To ensure you are stand out, to stand yourself out. He will bring opportunities before you. But are you prepared for that opportunity? The day they say the first lady is looking for a new tailor, designer, will your name be mentioned based on the level you are right now? The day they say the Asso Rock needs a presidential photographer, based on what you know about photography, can your name ever be mentioned there? You see how kings don't come before mediocrity. For you to be lifted, and I hope you know, to become a presidential photographer, you are no more in the ordinary category. Ah, no, you don't pass that level. God wants to lift believers. Believers are not yet qualified. That's why we are having unbelievers higher up their nose. They've qualified themselves. Are you going to do that this year? That's what this one will do for you. Learn something new about your work or your business or your career or social media every week. Have a journal, something learned. Note down every new thing you learn and implement the new thing you learn. Many of you saw that on my page, I posted how I'm learning cap cuts. And do you see the views it is getting me now? Now I'm able to put caption on my videos. It's actually opening me up to more, to more people. I'm able to, as in, add different kind of things and all that and even make it fun. And you know it's getting me more audience. It's getting me attention from people. People, It's not just people that know me now. It's expanding my page. It's deliberate. I taught myself. I, taught, I told you, I said I'm learning Canva. So as to be able to, this, even when I want to do images and all this, so I'll be able to do something better rather than something people will just swipe away you know aesthetics can make people look that way i will even reach more people for god i will reach more people for myself i'm expanding my knowledge you notice that this year i'm actually also showing more of affordable kitchen gadgets yes because i have a I, because there are also people a ready market waiting for me that cannot afford the hundred and something thousand gadgets. Does that mean they should now not use kitchen gadgets? No. It's something I told myself. This is also an untapped market you need to reach. That will also grow you. And you know it's opening me up to that. Now, before I was receiving adverts from Frankincense, from Bins Market and everything. Now I'm receiving adverts from all these people selling all these small, 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 small gadgets. It has opened up my business to that again. Those are the things you should do. Sit down with yourself and talk. You, you have a brain. Not only do you have a brain, the Bible says we have the mind of God. As a believer, you have the mind of God. Sit down. Ask the Holy Spirit for help. Think. What can I do? What new thing can I learn? What new thing can I learn? Thank you so much, Mercy. Daminola Ogotade. Thank you. What new thing can I learn? Please. You understand? These are things that will grow you. I'm telling you this because your father wants to lift you. Then, I said, speak the word. Again, we come to declarations and confessions over your finances, over your business, and over your career every day. Every day I speak. I speak. I speak over Asha Storehouse. I speak over uh, Dad's Lens. I speak over Lagos Housewife. I speak over my son's academics. 
I say, I tell them, I say, Lagos housewife, you are a city set upon a hill, you cannot be hidden. Asha storehouse, you are the light of God to the world. Nations are drawn unto you. I speak over them. Do you know, since I started speaking, do you know, we started, we started Asha storehouse January last year. Do you know in this month of January, the sales we have made from Asha storehouse, we have never made it before. When my husband was showing me, I opened my mouth. I said, my God, what happened? And the Holy Spirit told me what happened. He said, number two, the words you have been speaking are going into effect. And number, it's number one, the words you've been speaking are going into effect. And number two, you have been more intentional about posting about Asha Storehouse. You have been speaking about it more than you did last year. You've been doing recipes that relate to the things you are selling in Asha Storehouse. He said, this is the reward. See as thou a man diligent in his works. He will stand before kings and not before me and me. This morning, 1st of February, we had the largest single order we've, we've ever had in Asha Storehouse. The largest single order. The largest. One person. It was 1st of February. All through last year, we were selling, but it was not to this extent. What changed? What changed? I can tell you. See, when people tell you they don't know how they grow, I know they want to give God honor, but it's not the hundred percent truth. It that growth happens when you, your actions align with God. That is where the growth comes, and that's what I did this year. When I aligned my actions with the instructions God gave. When he gave me these instructions I gave to you, I started implementing it immediately. Paul said something. He said, so that me, after leading people to the gospel, might not fall behind. Every message I, I tell you on this platform, or even on my social media, I make sure I'm the first recipient of that message. I will first, when, I, when God gives me the message, I will balance and apply it to my life. When I teach it, I listen to it again myself and say, which one is not aligning with my life? I make sure my life aligns with it. That's what I immediately gave me these instructions. I started implementing them. Look at the results now. Look at the results. The Lord will help you. So speak the word. Declare, declare. Then ask the Holy Spirit for knowledge and creative ideas to start something, grow something, establish or expand something. One of the things uh, the Holy Spirit helped us to do, this is my uh, small kitchen, not the cooking studio. In the cooking studio, I really can't record myself doing recipes. Someone has to record me, so I either my husband either needs to do that or we need to get a staff to do that and all that. So it wasn't easy for me to be bringing out recipes frequently. But you notice that this year my recipes have increased. I'm bringing out a lot of recipes. Let me tell you something the Lord uh, told us regarding that. It was to my husband. He said, redesign this small kitchen. Make it a place where she can also shoot videos. And because it's small, it's compact, I don't need to start setting up anything big that I won't be able to do myself. I just put my phone on a small tripod, face it on the pot or on the blender, and immediately I'm able to do that. That one, I don't need help with anyone helping me to do it. Because of that, if I can just decide I want to fry egg and I'll do the video, I can just decide I want to do rice and beans and I'll just do the video. You see that it's helping me to produce more videos. It's blessing more people. It's bringing more attention to my page. Those are the kind of the ideas you should ask the Holy Spirit for. Holy Spirit, what can I do? Show me what to do. And then, he also helped us to get a new phone with better camera. 
look at the quality of the videos we are doing how many of you can believe it's just my phone i'm using it's not a camera it's my phone camera those are things the holy spirit will bring to you and then recipe ideas he gives me recipe ideas things look at do you know look at all those aromatic mixes i've been making when i first when i first thought of it i was like many of these things are not available in nigeria now will people care about it but the holy spirit told me do it do it do you know those aromatic mixes videos if i show you the insight on them the traction they are generating it's blessing more people. It's bringing visibility to me. And as it's bringing visibility to me, people are coming to my page and they are also seeing the word of God. Because I teach the word, I post the word. Now a lot of people are also being drawn to Christ. You see that? Ask the Holy Spirit for creative ideas, for knowledge. To start something or to grow something, to establish or to expand something. Look at all the ideas he's giving us. So please, now you understand the reason for these things. Ensure you do them. It's for your good. It's for your good. And the Holy Spirit will help you. Now you see that growing, becoming wealthy becoming prosperous knowing god achieving things is not magical is not for selected people alone is not something mysterious every single thing i listed in this place from from the first day when i gave you the steps and the goals let me tell you what they are to do number one they are to change you and to change your situation that is all these things are actually to do they are to change you from inside the person you are and to change your situation so that god will now be able to do what he wants to do in your life remember when i taught you in the teaching last year i said many of us delay what god wants to do in our lives because we don't change our character so even when god does something we still nullify the effect. A wasteful per, uh, person, no matter how much he's financially blessed, will still waste it. That's why you will see people winning the lottery and you look at their lives two years later. Rubbish. Their lives are still no. Do you know what happened? Because they didn't change. The money came, but because their character didn't change, it was still the same result they got. I've used the example. Many of you have said, ah, if only I have... 20,000 to start a business. You got the 20,000, you started the business, the business failed. Ah, it's because I didn't have enough money. You got 100,000, you started a business, the business failed. That's to tell you the issue is not the money. The issue is you. That's why whatever God wants to do, He first has to start in us before He can change the situation around us. Many times when the situation changes, and when the when your character changes the situation will automatically change you are the greatest change that is needed in your life and that's why god gave you these steps and goals so that you can change so that he will be able to change your situation apostle said something he said you went to us nothing nothing changed you were in nigeria nothing changed you travel to UK, nothing changed. He said, do you know why nothing changed? Because you turned up. He said, who was the same factor in everything? You. He said, that's to tell you, it's not your environment that needed changing. It's you. These things, these things will change. Will change you. And then, the situation will obey the change in you and change because many of the complaints you give about your spouses if you start implementing this thing of praising him twice before saying a negative thing even your relationship with your husband will change sure you know that's those are what these things will do everything from god 
to relationship to health to finance these things will change you and make you whole and perfect and the lord will help you so i have rounded up for today i've taken a little bit longer but i hope it has blessed you i hope you have learned from it anytime you see yourself weakening please come back to these messages to ginger yourself again come back to these messages and please help me like the video it's not too late please like the video so and share it copy the link and share it to people because everybody needs to hear this everybody the past three messages they are the most important for this year steps and goals to a successful 2023 that's part the, the first one then understanding why part one and understanding why part two these three messages please share it i'm begging you so that god will be able to bless his children and by you sharing it you're also making yourself a channel of blessing to other people and there's no one that is, uh, is used by god that god will not bless mightily you will not lose your blessings in jesus name thank you father we are so grateful you have helped us to conclude this your children have been blessed i speak lord that they will begin to see speedy results as they obey in Jesus' name. Nothing will be able to hinder their result. I stand against every plan of the enemy that says they will not achieve that which you want them to achieve this year. And I speak unto you, I say you have failed in Jesus' name. I raise a standard against you. The Lord rebuke you over their lives in Jesus' name. They are blessed. Their families are blessed. The works of their hands are blessed. None of them will be lost nothing they own will be lost I declare over them nothing missing nothing broken, nothing lost in the mighty name of Jesus testimonies upon testimonies the heart of the father will rejoice over you, his kingdom has come in your life, his will is done in your life in the mighty name of Jesus you are blessed of the Lord you go with the presence of the Holy Spirit you go with the confidence in Christ, the word of God is made manifest in you, the Holy Spirit is your helper, he will give you ideas that you've never thought of before, he will provide for every need, the grace that is needed to obey he releases unto you you in the mighty name of Jesus you and your family you are blessed you are protected you are shielded in Jesus mighty name we have prayed and received amen thank you so much everyone and I will see you next week with another topic from the Lord God bless you